Summary of Mrs. Packletide's Tiger by Hector Hugh Monroe Mrs. Packletide wishes she could go to India and shoot a tiger. Her interest in strange things comes from her eager need to top Luna Bimberton's recent flight with an Algerian pilot. Only a tiger skin and a lot of press photos could beat that, she says. Mrs. Packletide already dreams of the respect she will get from her London friends when she goes home with a story like this and a prize. Even better, she can't wait to steal the spotlight from her biggest enemy, Bimberton. In fact, Mrs. Packletide plans to show her foe how proud she is of her achievement by having a lunch party for Bimberton and putting the tiger skin on display. She will then give Bimberton a tiger claw brooch as a gift. Mrs. Packletide gives 1,000 rupees for the right to shoot a tiger in India without putting in too much effort or risk. Lucky for Mrs. Packletide, a village offers a shooting trip where she can shoot an old, almost tame tiger from the safety of the village's borders. The people in the village work hard to keep the tiger inside the village until Mrs. Packletide comes for the big photo shoot. The tiger is so weak and probably sick that the locals are glad it lives until Mrs. Packletide gets there. Louisa Mebin, who has been Mrs. Packletide's paid friend for a long time, goes on the hunt with her and complains loudly to the village headman about how much Mrs. Packletide is spending on a boring big game adventure. The goat is tied up as bait, and the two wait for the tiger to come near it while they rest on a tree perch. When the tiger shows up and sees the goat, it lays down out of exhaustion and slowly walks toward its prey. Miss Mebin is always looking for ways to save money, so she tells Mrs. Packletide to shoot the tiger before it eats the bait so they don't have to pay more for the goat. Then, when Mrs. Packletide's gun makes a loud shot, the tiger jumps to the side and rolls over dead. Mrs. Packletide and the other people in the town are very happy about the good shot. Louisa Mebin is the one who figures out that Mrs. Packletide shot the goat instead of the tiger, killing it. It looks like the old tiger was scared to death by the loud sound of the gun going off. Mrs. Packletide is upset, but she doesn't mind posing for pictures as a prize while she acts to have killed the big cat. She is happy with her lie because she knows that the locals and Miss Mebin will go along with it because she is paying them both. Photos of Mrs. Packletide and her dead tiger end up in newspapers as far away as America and Russia, while at home in London, she enjoys the attention of her adventures by holding a high-society lunch party and giving Luna Bimberton a tiger claw brooch as planned. The tiger skin moves from house to house in London so that it can be duly inspected and admired by the county. Mrs. Packletide's crazy plan gets even sillier when she goes to a costume ball dressed as Diana, the Greek goddess of the hunt. She says no to Clovis's idea that she throw a primitive dance party where everyone should wear the skins of beasts they had just killed. A few days later, Louisa Mebin shocks Mrs. Packletide by saying that she will tell everyone the truth about their hunt in India. Mrs. Packletide is forced by Miss Mebin to buy her a house near Dorking for £680. Miss Mebin calls the house Les Favre and plants tiger lilies around its edges. All of her friends are jealous of the property. At the end of the story, Mrs. Packletide tells her friends in London that she no longer goes big game shooting because the extra costs are so high. About the author. Monroe was born in Burma when it was still a British colony. Hector Hugh Monroe was better known by his pen name, Saki, but he was also often called H. H. Monroe. When he was two years old, his mother died. Saki's grandma and aunts took care of him and his brothers while their father kept working for the Imperial Police in Burma. After going to a good boarding school, Saki, like his father before him, joined the colonial Burmese military police and was sent to Burma. After two years, Saki got malaria, so he went back to England. He started out as a writer, writing with a sarcastic sense of humor that was critical of Edwardian British society. This sense of humor is also present in his stories. Saki went on to work as a foreign reporter in the Balkans and Russia, an author, and a short story writer. He never got married, so he might have been gay, but the politics of the time would have made him keep this a secret. Saki was 44 years old when World War I began, which was much older than the minimum age to join. But he chose to fight as a soldier on his own and turned down a chance to become an officer. 
During the Battle of the Anchor in France in 1916, he was hiding in a shell hole near Beaumont Hamel when a German shooter shot and killed him. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.